Okay, panel, we got a mailbag question from Jamie, who asks us, what is our favorite political movie or TV show, and which ones do we find the most realistic? I have a hard, ugly view on this, and I'll save it for last. Scott, go ahead. Um, so I got a, I, I got a, all kinds of different faves. I'll tell you what, if for sure, is not realistic. Uh, West Wing wasn't realistic. Sorry to disappoint everybody who's like a fan fave of it. It's fun, uh, but not everybody strolls through the halls. Uh, just, uh, you know cracking off like you know uh polymorphs on every popular subject imaginable um my favorites i love seven days in may um burt lancaster uh frederick march great old flick uh cold war thriller and it was written by rod serling and i'm a gigantic rod serling fan i'm a gigantic twilight zone fan all of my kids have watched the entire series with me um but my actual favorite is 13 days which maybe breaks the rule because it's kind of a docudrama. Like it's a, it's a, it's a movie. It's a full fledged movie, but it charts the 13 days of the Cuban Missile Crisis, and and the reason I love it because it's all about us guys. The reason I love it is that the whole movie is a testament uh, to uh, political advisors and the political level. You've got the establishment of the military, the establishment of the diplomatic corps, all lined up saying. Blow Cuba to bits, start Third World War, let's go in guns a blazing, Curtis LeMay like a lunatic, and you know, you've got JFK, RFK, and even God help us, even Kenny O'Donnell as portrayed by Kevin Costner, sitting there going, you know what? Like blowing up the fucking world's a big deal. Let's explore every other possible option, and they can call us political weaklings. But I love that movie, and it's a it's an absolute um it's a clinic in tension. They do a great job of showing how impossibly tense that must have been. Uh, I think it's a great movie. You guys must have had a much more exciting PMO than what I did. If, if you think that that's one of the more realistic shows about. Um, I, uh, like my, <laughs> that was my life. <laughs> Except I was the guy saying, bomb Cuba. Um, I like almost all political shows. Uh, an exception, I like the first kind of, these are just liking. I like the first few week, uh, 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 first few episodes or first few years of Scandal before it got weird. Uh, I thought House of Cards for the first half season was good. I It was so unrealistic to me that I had a very hard time actually following it. I stopped watching after, you know, Kevin Spacey threw Mr. in front of Mr. Subway. Harper pushed a woman in front of a subway though, didn't he? <laughs> I think yeah. I remember that. You know what? I, the killing of the person was pretty extreme, but not as unrealistic as the person that resigned their job to advance the policy. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? That <laughs> but to me, to me, there's a there's a few in terms of government. Uh, the most realistic show that I have watched is Veep. Eighty five percent of it is completely unrealistic, yes. and 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 but the fifteen percent is right. I watched, I've watched that show three different times, and there are times where whether it's how Selena Myers act or how the staff act, I'm like, fuck, I've I have done that. Bingo. I have seen that happen. Uh, in terms of campaigns, I'd say um, uh, our brand is chaos uh, uh, with Sandra Buckler uh, uh, being brought back in, having retired and being brought back in to run a campaign in in Latin America, and and kind of it's a wag the dog. Uh, type thing. I think there's elements of that. And also the new, um, the new show on Apple TV, Irresistible with um, Rose Byrne and uh, oh. Steve Carell. Um, there are parts of it. Uh, it's another one that's kind of funny, but there are parts of it that unless you're really a, uh, I think that there are parts that if you've been in politics, you appreciate it a bit more like trying to, you know, get cows to do something uh, in a photo op behind someone announcing their candidacy, like, can you move the cows to the left, to the left kind of thing. So uh, those are kind of, those are, those are kind of my favorites. All right. Well, I'm going to take this opportunity to rant against Aaron Sorkin, who I think has done more disservice to actual liberals practicing politics than any other single fucking person, right? All these Aaron's West Wing, American president, all these movies and TV shows are so crazy unrealistic about what it is to try to actually advance policy in the world and in politics. And, you know, uh, it, it leads people to the idea that all you have to do is have the right virtues, have the right belief systems and stand for them, and everything will fucking happen for you. Well, it doesn't work that way, and you have to put a lot of water in your wine. And if liberals haven't been liked Clinton or liked Obama and all that, it's partly because Aaron Sorkin has given them an unreasonable comparison to 
So I love Veep. Veep, if people haven't watched Veep, you have to watch Veep. That's the fucking end of it. Um, but my favorite, my favorite show that you haven't mentioned is Election. Yeah. With Reese Witherspoon and Matthew Broderick. Yeah. Um, uh, about the uh, Reese Witherspoon plays Tracy Flick. And if Tracy Flick isn't the exemplar of the stereotype of all women in politics since then, um, it's incredible what they, uh, what kind of a character they created there that has such resonance. And um, anyway, that's a hell of a movie. Uh, funny and sad, and it's got lots of little political lessons along the way. So there you go. That's my political. That's my political movie, along with, of course, B. Thirteen <laughs> days overrun. Um, no way. That Hurley B. Hurley. Guy, Hurley. That little guy. Yeah, fuck. That little guy uh, <laughs> overstated his story completely. Right, the guy that was played by uh, Kenny O'Donnell's part is wildly exaggerated. Yeah, Kenny O'Donnell was yeah. Kenny O'Donnell plus RFK. RFK saved the world there. <laughs> All right. Thank you, listeners. Send in the mailbag questions. We'll keep answering them. Till next week. Bye.